So the next dimension of personality that we're going to be talking about is sensing and intuiting. This dimension is all about how we take in and process information. So it's really focused on communication. So with this dimension, again, we've got the two options. Um, the S uh, obviously stands for sensing. The N, they have to use the N for intuition uh, because the I was already taken for introversion, I guess. Anyway, uh, they use the N to stand for uh, intuition. So let's talk about, again, a general overview, then some basic needs, and then some observable behaviors that you'll be able to notice with sensing and intuiting. So, uh, sensing preference, let me give you the definition for it first. These are folks that take in information through their five senses, right? So, uh, what, we got sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing, right? If they can uh, interact with it with their five senses, they can understand it clearly, all right? And what you, what you tend to see with the sensing preference is you tend to see that they look at, quote, unquote, what is, that's what they're most interested in. They want uh, tangible evidence. Uh, they also tend to look at the parts and pieces first. So they're not going to be looking for how everything works together. They're going to look specifically at each part and piece, first of all. Okay, And then they'll move on to the whole. It's very important that they are uh, able to receive and understand the details first. So they're going to look at each different section uh, of an issue. They're going to look at each component of a problem. Uh, they're going to be the kind of people that like to take apart radios just to see the way it works. Uh, they're going to be very hands-on kind of people. They're going to want to pick up stuff. They're going to want to touch it. They're going to love <clears throat> they're going to love laboratories where they can interact with the material and fool around with it and see what happens, right? The intuitive preference, the definition for intuitive preference is they take in information through the big picture. So these are the folks that really need to see uh, how everything connects and uh, they need to see the whole before they focus on any of the details. Uh, you're going to see uh, these kind of uh, people focused on patterns and details, right? So they're going to look at how X and E fit together rather than look at A, B, C, D, and then E. Uh, they're going to be maybe taking random things and putting them together in a creative fashion in order to understand it better. That's intuition, right? Uh, they're going to look for connections. They're going to try to understand uh, how one thing is related to another. Uh, that's going to be important for them to understand each thing separately. If I can understand how these two work together, I have a better understanding of the two of them on their own. That's the intuition uh, preference. So in general, you can kind of think uh, small scale, large scale. Sensing, intuiting, okay? <clears throat> okay, so let's then uh, look at some of the basic needs. What sensing preference, and, and, and keep in mind, this is about communication. So this is what they need when they're hearing from you, all right? The sensing preference needs facts. That's what they care about. They don't want interpretation. Uh, they don't want symbolism. They want facts and detail. How many, uh, when, uh, what, that kind of stuff is very important to them. Uh, you know, these are the kind of people, my wife worked in a bank for a while. She's a sensing preference. I always teased her that it was loan approved, loan denied. These are people who aren't going to give, uh, go out on a limb for you because uh, they're looking at your track record. Uh, they're looking at what you've done in other situations, and that's what matters to them most, is what they've seen, not what could be, right? Uh, their focus then, and their language as well, tends to be either very present, here and now, or past. Why? Because I can see the here and now, 
excuse me, I can see the here and now. I can see what happened in the past. I can't see the future, and so therefore I'm not going to attend to it as a sensing preference. Another need, uh, especially communicationally, is they need sequential data, right? So my wife, when she is telling a story, uh, will go through each step of the story. So, uh, for instance, right now she's a contractor, and so she might say, well, Frank told me that I needed uh, to talk to John uh, about the contract I was working on, so I went to John, and John said, no, actually you need to talk to Emily, because she has the information you need, and so I went to Emily, and Emily then was able to give me the information. Now, in my brain, I'm not a sensing preference, I am an intuitive preference, I'm saying, why is John a part of the story? Who cares? right? John did not uh, tell her what she needed to know. Why not just get to where Emily uh, gave her the information? Get to the punchline, right? That's what I care about. But for her, it's important for me to know that John was a part of this process. And so she went through him to get to where she needed to go. That is important for the sensing preference. They need that sequential uh, data. They also really like concrete data. Uh, don't tell me what you think, uh, tell me what you know. That's the credo of the sensing preference. For intuitive preferences, the needs are very different. Intuitive preference, uh, what they need is uh, possibilities, right? I need to see where this could go. I need to see uh, growth, right? These are things that are very stimulating for the uh, intuitive preference, right? Uh, as a therapist, I am an intuitive preference. Pretty much all therapists are intuitive preferences. Why? Because when a, a arguing uh, brink of divorce couple comes into your office, if you were making your decisions based on what is, uh, you wouldn't work with them. Uh, my job in a first session is always to try to transpose what this couple could look like at their fifth session, at their tenth session. Uh, I am always looking beyond who they are uh, to see where uh, they could be. Uh, and that possibility is very important for me. If I am faced too much with people saying, no, we can't talk about possibilities, we've got to look at the world as it is, uh, I, I get very drained very quickly. Okay, uh, their positioning is not with the past, hardly at all, uh, very little in the present, really oriented towards the future, right? Because that's the horizon, that's the thing that draws me, okay? Uh, and then the other big thing that they need is they need theoretical understanding, right? So if you're just going data, 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 with intuitive preferences, you're going to lose them. You've got to be answering more than just the what and the when. You've got to be talking about how and why. These are important questions that intuitive preferences need to grapple with in order to understand a situation to the best of their ability. So what you're going to see, again, it's going to show up in how people talk. Uh, you're going to uh, see language that's very, for a sensing preference, very literal. When they describe, they are going to describe uh, the class based on how many people were there, what the professor covered. Uh, you know, they're not going to talk so much about wh whether they liked it or not, uh, or whether it was engaging. Uh, they're going to be telling you more of the literal things that happened. If they're giving advice, the sensing preference prefers to offer practical advice more how-to, right? Fix it. Uh, the, and these people are great at giving practical advice because it's very simple, it's concise, and it's organized. Okay? Uh, sensing preferences really like uh, to follow instructions. In fact, that'll show up. Uh, they, they will come to you and say, so what are we going to do? What's the game plan? Uh, that's very important for the sensing preference, right? Uh, sensing preferences love the recipe because I can follow the recipe and I always know that step one, step two, step three is going to take me to the end, which is where I want to go, okay? You're also going to see them to be very good with directions. They know my wife, you could plop her down uh, in a place one time and she will be able to get you back to that place 
uh, the next time. Uh, God bless her. I cannot do that. I'm lost without a GPS. But her, she's taking in all of the factual data around her. She's noticing it. I'm flying right by it. I'll tell you a story about that in just a minute. The intuitive preference, what are, you going to, what are you going to hear in their language? You're going to hear visionary language. You're going to hear a lot of metaphor. Uh, these are people that are going to be, again, making connections between unconnected things, and they're going to say, you know, it's kind, our group is kind of like on a life raft right now, right? And, and they're going to work that metaphor until it's so clear to them, right? Uh, and the sensing preference is going to say, yeah, but what do we do? Uh, okay, life ref, great. Okay, beautiful metaphor. What are we going to do? They're not going to be moved by the metaphor, but the uh, intuitive preference is very much going to be moved by the metaphor, and they're going to be bored by the details. Uh, you're going to hear creative language. Uh, you're going to hear uh, imaginative language, playful language. Uh, these are people, uh, intuitive preferences, really prefer to do uh, creative writing and that sort of thing, whereas sensing preferences find that to be a drain. Uh, sensing preferences love to do sequential stuff, and intuitive preferences find that to be a drain. Okay? If the intuitive preference is going to give you advice, it's going to be inspirational advice. I, I believe in you. You can do this. Right? And, and they're going to be great cheerleaders. They may not be great teachers, though in terms of telling you exactly how to do it and do it well. Uh, and then finally, uh, they're, they're, just, they're not good with directions, intuitive preferences. Uh, I am an intuitive preference, and I, uh, I was coming back from Minnesota on my own, and uh, I had heard about this place called Effigy Mounds Park. And it was, uh, it was in Iowa, uh, along the Mississippi River, and it was just beautiful. I was there in the fall, and I stopped, and it was it was moving. It was it was amazing. It were all these uh, Native American burial mounds, uh, and an overlook of the Mississippi, and the leaves were falling, and it was just a very spiritual place. Uh, really, I just I really enjoyed my time there. And then I was coming home. This was in the days before cell phones. I get in my car, and I pull out of the parking lot, and I'm driving along. And I went about 15 miles before I got to the sign that said, Welcome to Minnesota. So I was driving 15 miles of uh, my trip backwards, uh, heading back to Minnesota instead of south to the Quad Cities. And so I got home, obviously, later. And my wife was wondering why I was home so late. And I told her the story about driving to Minnesota again. And she w shook her head, basically. Uh, <laughs> And not understanding how I could do this, but this was a beautiful place, and I wanted to actually take her. And so next year, the next year in October, uh, for our anniversary, I took her, and we had a picnic there, and we walked through the park, and it was beautiful. And we're we're loading up to go, and we're pulling out of the parking lot, and she's like, "Oh, is this the place where you drove back to Minnesota?" I said, "Yes." She goes, "If you're driving north." In, in Iowa, along the Mississippi River, the river should be on your right. <laughs> I had driven, thinking I'm going south, it should have been on my left, I had driven with this Mississippi River on my right uh, for 15 miles, this huge river right next to me, and I had completely missed that uh, tiny little detail. Uh, why? Because my mind was still wrapped up in the meaning of the place that I had just visited instead of paying attention to the direction that I was going. So that's sensing and intuiting.